want to um, draw your attention to the speech bubble icon that says chat. If you click that, a chat window will pop up. So if you have questions at any point through the presentation, um, for Catherine, for what she's going over, go ahead and type those into the chat box and we will um, read them out and make sure we have time for Catherine to get to those. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Catherine and here we go. Great, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Amy. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Catherine Lang. I work for CLCC as the Sandy Breslin Conservation Fellow. This is the most amount of people I've seen in months, so this is really exciting for me. <laughs> um, and today we'll be walking through social media and videos for land trusts. We're going to break this up into different stages, starting with recording your video, moving on to editing it online, and then finally sharing it on social media and other platforms. So first, we'll start off, start off with phase one, recording your video. The first thing you wanna do, like with any great project, is to make sure that you are planning ahead. One tool that you can use, it's optional, um, but you can choose to use a storyboard. There's a little image of one here I've included. This does not have to be artistic. This does not have to be very detailed, but um, essentially a storyboard is a sketch of what you visualize for your video, for your end product. Because although it might be a picture perfect, beautiful movie in your mind, not everybody else can see that and people might have trouble understanding your ideas. So putting them down on paper, um, the best that you can with words, with sketches, will get everybody on the same page so that when you go and shoot for your video, you all have a better idea of what you're doing. Um, it also provides you a plan so that when you go out and are taking footage for your video, um, you have a plan, you can kind of check off as you go what shots you've acquired, what else you need to go and do. Um, and again, it's just a really good planning tool. You also wanna make sure in advance of shooting that you know what the point of your video is, what the message is. You might say, well, yeah, it's a fundraising video or, it's a summary of this cool event that we had. Um, but it's worth taking time to pick that apart a little more. So beyond just fundraising or just showing your stewardship crew, for example, what emotions do you want the viewer to have while they're watching it? What is the message? What is the tone of the video? Um, these things are all really good to know, again, in advance of shooting. So everyone's on the same page and that you can kind of um, make sure that you're recording certain things, certain angles, the best that you can that meet those messages and that meet those emotions. Right, again, uh, to plan ahead, you wanna make sure that everything you have is working in advance. This is very similar to if you had a job interview the next day, making sure that you knew where you were going, your car worked, you had your resume printed out, all of the same themes apply here. So if you're gonna use your phone camera, make sure that it works. Make sure that your phone has enough storage space. That's crucial. Video clips are a lot bigger than photos on your phone. So um, it's worth looking in your phone settings to see how much storage you have. Maybe you have to delete a few things in order to make sure um, that all the videos will, will fit on your phone. Um, as soon as you're done, you can upload them off and have that space open on your phone again, but just make sure that you have enough space. If you're going to use some sort of microphone or a tripod, those are optional, but if you're going to use those, again, make sure they work at least a day in advance. Again, like a job interview, you wanna scout the location, make sure you know where you're going. If you've never been there before, make sure it's appropriate. Um, maybe someone told you this trail was really great for shooting your video, but in actuality, it might not meet your plans. Make sure that you have a plan for lighting. Maybe you've seen a meadow or a forest, whatever the location is. Um, make sure you have a weather plan. A lot of us will be shooting outside for our preserves, our stewardship crews. So make sure you have a backup plan for the weather. Um, and if you're going to be outside somewhere, make sure you have a plan to steady the camera. A lot of people think they can just hold it 
and that's fine. Um, but a lot of us shake a little bit more than you might think, especially if it's windy. So you want to see where you could potentially set up your phone. If you have a tripod, great, but you certainly do not need one. Um, you can set it up on a rock wall or a tree branch. I have my phone and computer on a makeshift standing desk right now. So you can certainly be creative, but make sure you have planned that in advance. Okay, so as far as your content, there's a lot of fancy technical things you can do to make videos, but at the end of the day, if what you're shooting is quality content, if it's a heartwarming story or something funny a kid is doing or a really interesting wildlife scene, that will win. So as long as your content is quality, you don't have to worry too much about all the fancy technical stuff. So remember that short is sweet. Um, if we're going for social media videos, the shorter the better, even under 90 seconds. If you're gonna be going on Instagram, that's gonna be um, a maximum of 60 seconds. So know that when you're filming that you can record as much as you want and recording more is better, so you have more to choose from later. But at the end of the day, you will be condensing all of this down to a very short video. The first three seconds are gonna be crucial. When people are scrolling on social media, they have all kinds of photos and videos that are flying by them. So your first image or your first scene has to be really compelling to make the viewer stop and look and actually be interested in what you are showing. So keep that in mind when you're recording, what's gonna be my first image? What's gonna be my, my first impression to the viewer? Make sure that it's compelling and interesting. I always advise to shoot in landscape, so that's the horizontal way um, of your phone, unless you're going for a selfie style on purpose. Um, that can be certainly an option for you, but for most things in terms of scenic landscapes, group shots, events, landscape is better. It will fill more of the computer screen. It fits better many times on social media platforms. Um, Right now on this Zoom call, I'm using my phone to broadcast my face. So at least from my perspective, like two thirds of where I am on the Zoom is black because my phone's in vertical. If I flipped to horizontal, it would fill more of the space. So you wanna make sure that you are filming horizontally. Again, study the camera and whatever means you can do so. Sometimes even if you're holding in your hand, but you rest your arms on a rock wall, a table, a bench, whatever it may be, just to make sure that you are steady so the scene doesn't shake. Lighting is crucial. Um, a lot of us feel compelled to go out on a really bright, beautiful, sunny day. Sometimes all of that sunlight can wash out the person in the photo. For example, I have a wonderful picture of Amy and I here in North Carolina at Raleigh. We are thrilled to be there, we're very happy, but we are squinting because the sun is right in our face. Um, I am looking really pale, <laughs> it kind of washes me out. So it's best to check that beforehand. If it's too bright in one spot, move, try a different spot. Um, on the opposite side of it being too sunny, if you are in a forested setting, like this example, Sometimes there can be shadows on your face on one side. Um, as we all know, the light streams through the trees in kind of like a, like a pattern or inconsistent way in the forest. We all love that, but sometimes it doesn't look good when you're shooting um, a video. This is an example from our Earth Aid video. This is Anne from the Roxbury Land Trust. Um, on this day, it's kind of an overcast day, so you can see that it's certainly bright enough for us to see her, her dogs, her sign, but she's not washed out. She is not gonna have to squint and be uncomfortable in the video. She also has a nice color contrast with the bright, beautiful background. Um, she has the blue shirt on, so it's a really good color contrast. But again, it's not overexposed or too much. Another good example, Here's uh, Susan from the Manchester Land Conservation Trust. Again, this is an overcast day, but it's still certainly bright enough for us to see her, the sign, the background, everything is really clear and crisp. 
Okay, so beyond uh, taking videos with your phone outside, you can also take videos on the computer. So if you're going to walk somebody through a new website or you wanna direct people to your Facebook video, you can record what you're doing on your computer screen and include that in a video um, to make it really accessible, to show people how to, how to do something online. This depends on whether you have a PC or Mac computer. Um, if you have a PC, there is this really interesting feature built into your computer called the Xbox Game Bar. That's for gamers mostly, um, but we can also use it for other purposes. There's a um, keyboard shortcut if you do Windows and the G button together. Um, some graphics like I have in this photo will pop up over your screen <clears throat> excuse me, and allow you to actually record your screen as you're going. If you can see my mouse, I'm not sure if you can, let's see. If you can see my mouse here, this button will allow you to record your screen um, and then it'll save to your computer in whatever folder you choose. It'll also be in a folder right here. So it's kind of a roundabout, interesting way that all PCs can record their screens. If you have a, an older computer, it might not work, but most of the newer models have this built in. Additionally, you can also record your screen via, excuse me, via PowerPoint. If you're using that program, they have a record screen button right in there as well. For our friends with MacBooks, you can also do the same thing, um, but you don't have to use the Xbox game bar. You have a screenshot toolbar built into yours as well. Um, I don't have a Mac, so I'm not speaking from experience, but the keyboard shortcut is Command Shift 5 all at once. When you do that, the bar like this should pop up. You might have to press that combination again to start and stop the video. Um, but again, this toolbar should let you access all of those functions. So pretty interesting stuff to add on to your video. Again, if you're showing somebody a website, a GIS map, or some other interesting online feature. Okay, subtitles are a really cool addition that are certainly optional, not mandatory. Um, here, I hope that's silent. Sorry if that has volume, it should be silent, but, um, Adding subtitles is a great way to enhance your videos, not only for accessibility, so if folks are hard of hearing, if they're deaf and can't hear you, then they can also participate in the video by reading the subtitles. Um, but even just for, for everybody else, hearing abilities aside, when you're scrolling and you see the subtitle in addition to the video, that tells you more about what the video is about it is more engaging to the viewer to see what's going on, to have subtitles. It can kind of pull you in more. Um, if you have an iPhone, there's a handy app called Clipomatic. You can download. Um, that's what AOC is using over here on the right. You can record yourself and the captions will come up automatically as you're speaking. Um, she uses that a lot. If you can go to her, her Instagram, she posts them often. That's how I saw it. Um, for the rest of us, if you're posting a video on Facebook, you can edit the caption of the video, excuse me, of the video before you publish it. So when you're uploading a video onto Facebook, um, and I can go through this as a demo afterwards if anyone would like to, but when you're gonna upload a video onto Facebook, you can save it as a draft, edit it, and actually insert captions right into Facebook. So it's really integrated and they'll come up as people are scrolling on Facebook. Otherwise, you might have to do it manually with the video editing software of your choice. It'll take a little longer, um, might be a bit more tedious, but again, subtitles are a really great idea for accessibility and for engagement. Okay, on to the editing phase. <laughs> Uh, one thing I really recommend is to organize all your content. Hopefully, when you were out and about shooting, you took a lot of clips, um, maybe some B-roll even of some generic nature scenes or people scenes, whatever it is to have in the background. Um, ooh, we have things going on in the chat. Pause as well to the end of the session. Yes, I will. <laughs> um, Anyways, if you have a lot of video clips, you should definitely organize them with a dedicated folder 
on your computer. I use Google Drive, other people will use um, just your computer storage, either way is fine. I recommend to name each clip for our Earth Day project. I had a ton of awesome submissions by our land trust, and so I named each one by the land trust name so I could easily go through um, and just to make sure that I knew what I was doing and I had everything in the order that I wanted. So there's a lot of different platforms you can use to edit videos and I'll name a few in a second, but a lot of them will look like this at the bottom. Um, if this is new to you, each of these rows, so here it says logo, captions, video, each of these rows is referred to as a layer. You can think of this as if you've ever made um, like a poster project when you were in middle school maybe and you had the poster board first, think of that as your layer one. And then maybe you taped on some photos, that was layer two, and maybe you cut out some text from a magazine and pasted that on top with your, with your hot glue gun, that was layer three. It's the same concept, um, obviously not physically, it's all integrated digitally, but that's how you can think of it as layers, as one laying below another one. These layers are a good idea to keep your video, any audio, music, voiceovers you might have, and text separated. Um, so you can work on them all individually. This was um, a screenshot of my Earth Day video in the process um, of making it. I use a platform called WeVideo that I'll mention in a moment, but this is what it looked like while I was making it. So if you can see at the bottom, I've got each clip. On top of that is my text. So I put the name of the land trust in there as like a little caption. And so that was a separate layer. And then if I wanted to add some music, that would go up here. Um, what's common to most video making platforms are the words split and trim. If those are new to you, those are different ways of cutting the length of each of your video clips. Splitting, if you were to click one of these videos exactly where you clicked it, you could cut it in half and split the clip um, into two parts. Trimming um, will also make it shorter, but you do that at the beginning or the end of the video clip and like shave off a few seconds. So for example, if you were outside recording someone and they had a few ums in the beginning or maybe at the end, something happened that you wanted to cut out, but the most of it was good, you could do that by trimming off the beginning or the end and making a really smooth start and finish and making sure that only the content you want is being broadcast in your video. So there's a lot of platforms out there. If you just do a quick Google search, so many will come up. So you have a lot of options, which is really great, but also a little overwhelming. Almost all of the platforms you'll find online offer a free version and a paid version. Obviously the free one will have a lot fewer features than the paid version, but it's up to you what you wanna do. Um, I have mostly used free versions except for we video down here, like I mentioned, is what I used for our Earth Day video. One of our colleagues at Save the Sound had an account and kindly lent it to us. Um, I had a really good experience using that. But I'll go over these from the top. Um, up in the top left, Canva is a great platform, mostly for static things, so photos, posts, um, for our 2020 conservation conversation events that we're having, I'm making all of the brands, the posts through Canva. So if you see those coming up and you should go and like and comment and share on them uh, by making all of those posts through Canva. Um, you can do videos through Canva. It's really easy to use. Um, the free version offers a lot for you. So I, you wouldn't need to pay for it. I don't think you can do videos on there. However, you can't edit the clips once they're in. You have to put in perfect videos and then you can add on fun text and colors, things like that. Um, on to the right, Lumen5 does a very similar thing. It's made explicitly for posting on social media, but they do allow you to edit your video clips inside the platform. 
So those two, again, are specifically made for social media. Um, these bottom four, you can do longer um, videos if you're doing something beyond the social media realm of like 60 seconds. These are more for you. Flex Clip, this is an online program, so you don't have to download anything. Um, you can put together a lot of, whoop, just making sure everything is okay. Um, you can put together uh, longer clips on Flex Clip and add text that moves. You can add fun transitions and make it look really professional on Flex Clip. I haven't used it for any long projects, but um, it looks really professional. Down here on the bottom left, We Video again is the one that I used. That is really professional um, in the paid version, the free version I can't speak for, but um, I, that will have, like I showed you, this long tracking feature where you can see how long you're going for. You can zoom in down to like the microsecond to make very small edits. Um, and they have a lot of stock music and stock footage that you can use to complement your own footage and music. These two on the right, um, iMovie comes downloaded free with MacBooks. So if you have a Mac computer, this is probably already on your computer. And if it's not there, you can get it for free. Um, again, this is just for those with Apple computers. Um, it's really easy to use with an iPhone. So if you recorded a lot of clips or pictures on your iPhone, you can airdrop them right into iMovie on your computer and it's really seamless. Um, you also, at the end of your project on iMovie, can share it directly to Facebook and YouTube. So all of these things can go on Facebook and YouTube, but iMovie has that right in the program, so it's really easy to send it off into the social media world. On the bottom right, Windows Movie Maker um, is the PC equivalent of the pre-downloaded video editing software. It used to come with the computer. Now you have to download it free off the internet, but um, again, it's still free for PC users. It has not as much functionality as I think iMovie and these other two on the left, but still get the job done. Um, I can show you it here. I have it on my computer here. Um, so you can click on a clip. You can trim and split, like I mentioned. You can add text to it, um, move it around, add transitions, but it's a little bit limited. Uh, there are ads on the sides. If so, if that bothers you, this might not be the program for you. But again, free for PC users. We'll go back to this. Rebecca, maybe now is a time to do the one of those polls about which platforms people use. Ooh, or that one. Yeah, Catherine, why don't we, um, I can launch this poll or launch this poll now and then I can follow right up with that uh, second poll if that's good to go with you. Okay, sure. Catherine, um, so we're sharing the poll results here, about 50-50 split. I think we might have some folks on here that are pretty used to uh, these platforms, so they feel about the same, but definitely some more confident, which is great. Um, Deb has asked in the chat if you've used uh, Adobe's video editor at all. Yeah, so I have used that. I wouldn't recommend it for the beginner if you are making like one video one time for your land trust as kind of a one-off. The Adobe software is really powerful and really exciting, but can be a little overwhelming for a, a, someone who's things for the first time. So the Adobe software is fantastic, um, but also intense. Great power comes great responsibility with the Adobe software. 
And then Christina has just uh, noted that she has found taking video with her iPhone, it can be pretty shaky while walking. Do you have any other ideas for videos while walking? Yeah. Um, it's best if you can have somebody else record you. And if you have a, a friend that makes it better, obviously it's not ideal in the time of COVID to be with other people, but if you can have somebody else record you, um, that distance between you and the camera will alleviate a little bit of the shakiness. Also on some video platforms, there is like an edit effect where you can reduce the blurriness. Um, I tried that in WeVideo. It was like a neg like barely a change I found. You can certainly try those. So a lot of these programs will have effects meant to mitigate that. Um, also, you could try recording on your phone in sport mode. Sport mode will, um, it tracks movement more. So sometimes the shakiness, it'll refigure itself to focus on you as the subject rather than the whole thing shaking. Or something like that. And there's one more. Oh, you saw it. Great. <laughs> yeah, from Julie. So um, Animoto, I don't know what that is. So you can tell us if you like that one better. Again, there are so many platforms out there um, that you have to find the one that works for you. If that's yours, then fantastic. And I would love if you could share what you like about it. Um, Again, I use Canva for our static things. So like photos with text, logos, things like that. And then I really liked WeVideo for long videos. So the ones on the, on the left are my personal favorites. And again, they all have free and paid versions depending on what you wanna do. Um, and the paid versions are not that expensive from what I've seen and will range depending on what you wanna do. And I just went ahead and launched that um, second poll to get you moving into the next section here, Catherine. Thanks. Question about time-lapse videos. That is really cool. Man, um, I've never done one. Again, what I said at the beginning about making sure that your phone has enough storage definitely applies, whether you're using your phone or um, a full-on camera. You really need a lot of storage for those. And to make sure that the weather's okay, it's not gonna get rained on or anything. Um, but I've never done one, personally. Okay, so the results of the poll, I don't know, Rebecca, can everybody see these results or just us? So everyone can see these results, yep. Cool, okay. So everybody's on Facebook, and then we have some on Instagram, and then less on Twitter and YouTube, okay. One Flickr holdout, that's funny. Okay, great, well, I'm gonna focus on Facebook and Instagram um, here, so hopefully that will be applicable to everybody's um, experiences. We'll just cruise right along into sharing your content out into the world. Once we go through this at the end, I can share my screen and show you, I can share my screen and show you um, how to use Canva or the Wee Video project that I did so we can see that in action a little bit at the end if you want. Okay. So when you are sharing on social media, whatever your platforms are, whether you have one or 10 different accounts, it's really important to make sure that you are being consistent with your organization's voice. And this is beyond just videos, but making sure that all of your posts, videos, whatever you're sharing um, has a similar voice. All of you probably tried to do this already in your publications and your social media. Um, it's also important to post often to show folks that you are engaged, you're active, you are someone who uses social media, 
that encourages the viewers to reach out to you. They know that you are on pretty frequently. So if they comment or send you a message, you're likely to see that and respond pretty soon. Um, that doesn't mean that you should post random things just for the sake of posting. Like we're going for quality over quantity. You can always repackage things you've already posted and share them again saying, hey, have you seen this? We did this the other day. It's really great. Check it out again. Um, that goes into supporting your peer organizations. If you have nothing to post yourself, there is plenty of stuff that all of our fellow land trusts and other organizations are posting that you can reshare on your own pages. We do that all the time. Um, it keeps your account active, exposes your audience to their organization and vice versa. So you're strengthening the community partnerships and just making sure that everybody gets some good face time on your social media accounts. Uh, making sure that you're posting on all of your platforms. If you have a Facebook and an Instagram and a Twitter, it can be a little overwhelming to think, okay, I'm going to post this great photo. I have to post it on all three separately. Um, it can be a little overwhelming, but really important to do to make sure that all of your platforms are consistent and updated. So if somebody just uses Twitter, that they are still getting that same information and the same content that you're making. Um, because Instagram is owned by Facebook now, you can publish directly from Instagram right onto Facebook. So you're posting on two platforms with one click. That's really easy to do on your account. If you go into settings, you can link up your Facebook and Insta Instagram account and, and post two at once. We do that pretty often. If you use constant contact, CLCC does, there's also an option to post straight to Facebook once you make something on there. So if you are done on constant contact, ready to publish that, you can publish it straight to Facebook as well. Again, two platforms, one click, save yourself a little bit of time. If you use a different um, donor communication platform, I'm sure there's probably similar social media integration that's worth looking into in the settings and the sharing settings of whatever platform you use. Um, if you have a lot of content to share and a lot of accounts and you're finding that it is overwhelming, exhausting to post on all of them, there are separate technologies you can use to coordinate that. Some of them are, I think most of them are paid. Um, so you will have to pay for these services, but Hootsuite, Sprout Social, Buffer are examples of technologies. You can plug in all of your accounts. So you can say the CLCC, Facebook, the Instagram, and Twitter accounts all in one. You can hit publish and whatever you have, photo, video, post, will go out on all three at the same time or at a time in the future that you schedule. So these technologies are typically used for larger organizations who are posting all the time, but something to consider if you find yourself in that position. Okay, our good friend Facebook. It looked like a lot of you were using Facebook, so excuse me, some of this might be repeat, but um, if you're not already using Facebook events, I highly recommend we use them often. Um, on the events, you can tag any co-hosts you might have. So again, that um, will engage their audience and yours. So folks coming onto our Climate Primer event on the right would see that we're hosting the Land Trust Alliance. That's a live link. They can go and see their page right then. So it makes um, a bit more interactive. Events also will encourage user engagement because there's an RSVP button that's optional, but folks can click that and that that will drive up how many times your event is on people's news feeds. The more people that hit going or interested, um, the more times it'll show up on people's feeds. I will selfishly make my friends click interested or going sometimes on our events. I'll selfishly have my friends like all of our stuff because then it'll say, oh, so-and-so liked Connecticut Land Conservation Council's post, and it'll come up again. So if you've got a bunch of kids with Instagram accounts or people in your family, it's worth having them do that just so it kind of drives up how many times these things come up in people's new speeds. Um, with tagging peer organizations, it's critical to not only mention them, but actually tag them. 
So on Facebook, if you don't hear this already, if you hit the at symbol and then start typing the organization's name, their page will come up as an option. You can link it into your post. So if I wanted to say, um, who's an organization? If I wanted to say, hey, Connecticut Farmland Trust, I could start with the app button, type them in, and they would come up in my post. Um, so again, that's a good way to be interactive and to drive engagement. Facebook insights are really interesting. I'll show you those now on our Facebook page. This is the inside look of CLCC. <laughs> so here we are on our Facebook page. If you don't use this, oh, hold on. I'm gonna, on the top bar up here, it says insights. I'm gonna click that. This will take us to the analytics section of your Facebook page. And this is only for um, your organization page. If you have a personal Facebook account, you don't have this. This is just for organizations. From here, you can see what's going on. Uh, you should ignore the red colors. <laughs> just kidding. But you can see who's been going to your page, how often, when people are liking things, um, post engagement, followers, and you can click on these and they'll break it up to an even more nuanced level of when people are following you and why, or not why, but what time of day even. So there's some really nuanced data in here that is worth looking around on your Facebook account. Um, the more you post, the more accurate this will be. So worth looking into for your own organization's account. At the top here, you can change it from just yesterday, last week, or last month, and that will obviously change the numbers around. So worth looking into on your own page. There you go, now you know all, all of our secret data for CLCC. Okay, uh, very popular in the COVID area is going live on Facebook and Instagram, which I'll go into in a second. Um, but Facebook Live has become super popular. It is pretty convenient and easy to do. You can go live whenever you're ready to and go live then, or you can schedule it for later down the line if you want to. Um, the button is right here at the top of your page. I've just made our conservation conversation events for this summer. We're gonna try it out on Facebook Live. So I've made the events, I have planned to go live for the future. So right now it says that we are planning to go live on this date and this time. Um, once you have made a live video, those stay on your page in the video tab over here with any other videos you might have. So you can save them there, you can delete them if you want to as well, but those are automatically saved onto your page. Um, also, Weirdly enough, when you go live, you can specify the location of your viewers. So if you wanted to, for some reason, you can say, I'm going live, but only for people in New Haven, or I'm going live for everyone except people in Boston, for example. Um, I think that's meant for big corporations, but if that suits your needs, that option is there for you from Facebook. This is an example of something I've been watching. Um, the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus has been holding town halls via Facebook Live. They have Zoom combined with Facebook Live, so it's pretty impressive. Um, they're doing another one tonight at 5.30, I think, with the governor, in case you're interested. Um, but this is what it looks like. So on the top left, you can see how many people are tuning in to you at the moment, and that will change as you go. People can drop in and drop out, so that number will change. Um, people can react. If they hit the like button or the angry button or something, it'll come up live, so if you are speaking, you can see how people are feeling about it in real time. On the right is the comment bar, like any other Facebook post. These also will come up in real time, so you can address them as you're speaking. Um, it's a powerful tool, something to consider, especially during COVID. Also, if you follow this page, you will get a notification when they go live. So if I followed uh, Greenprint, for example, and you all decided to go live, I would get a notification on my phone that you're going live. 
Um, so another incentive for folks to, to join and watch. Okay, moving over to Instagram. Um, this is our profile on the right. If you don't already have this already, make sure to include a link in your bio. That's the phrase that people are using is, check the link in my bio. <laughs> you can change that as you want to. Right now, our link is for this webinar series that we're hosting. Um, but you can change that throughout the year just to your homepage, to an event. If you have a fundraiser, make sure that you are putting that there. Um, and you would just click edit and then copy and paste right there. Instagram stories, if you haven't used these before, are pretty powerful. They are only temporary. They won't be on your Facebook page um, forever. Um, we'll get to that later, though. They expire in 24 hours, so these are really good for time-sensitive events. So if you have something coming up that you want to promote, you want to say, like, come down to our event tomorrow. It'll expire within 24 hours. It's gone. You don't have to worry about it. These can be photos, videos, you can repost other people's posts up there and share that way. And you can also add some really cool things. So on these examples, I have New Haven Gather promoting event they were having. On the right, the Hartford Current um, put up a series about Connecticut's reopening phase. So again, time sensitive, relevant content. For more examples of this, um, this is a store I follow. You can post many things to your story. So for example, they have a photo of razors, something that they sell. Then they put the caption over top and the next frame. So the user is going to be clicking through, tapping through all of these as they go. Tap to the next one, a new product, a new caption. So that's a way to convey a lot of information, um, but not overwhelm the space and the screen for the viewer. Um, this is the Santa Monica Mountains National Park Service. They have added a little guess the plant button. You can do that too on your Instagram. You can add on these little question bars and title whatever you want. And then all of the answers will come into your account. You at that point can respond directly to people. You can post people's answers up to your story again. So if someone guessed all the plants correctly, I might post their answers and say, congrats to Rachel, you are the plant expert, something like that. Um, these questions are a fun feature that you can add and again are only on the story, which is there for 24 hours. Um, I saw someone say, do Facebook and Instagram stories go up at the same time? Is that what it was? Um, the answer is if you want them to. Facebook also has stories. It's less interactive. They don't have these fun question things, at least to my knowledge. Um, Facebook stories also aren't quite as popular as them on Instagram. But when you are posting a, an Instagram story, you can also publish it to your Facebook story at the same time if you want to. Again, because of the same company, you can post on both at the same time or do your stories at the same time. This is another fun feature by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. They have a little quiz here. Um, if you were to click that and guess as a user, if you clicked it right, it would turn green and like confetti would come down. If you clicked it and it was wrong, it would turn red and tell you which one was the correct answer. Again, when you put these up, you receive all of those responses. So you'll say, oh, Catherine Lang guessed a long build curlew and she got it wrong and you'll receive all of that data which then you can share or just keep to yourself if you want to at the end okay um so those stories like i said expire in 24 hours however there's a new feature that you can actually save those stories to your profile forever if you want to. Again, this is completely optional, but on your profile, which looks something like this on your phone, there's the story highlights button about halfway down the page. If you click that, it opens up these little circles, at which point you can add all those stories you made into what they're calling a highlight, which is a, just a collection of those stories onto your profile. For some examples, um, here's the Wetterland Trust in Massachusetts. If you see their three 
highlights circles here. They theme them into learn, explore, and give. So you can think about everything you've posted and maybe they fall into buckets like that. Maybe they fall into events or stewardship, trail building, whatever it is. You might have broad categories like this that make sense for your profile. Taking it a step further, in Connecticut, we have the Wilton Land Conservation Trust. They have made little title slides for each one. Um, looks like some of their properties have a dedicated highlight and then meet the interns here. Taking it even another step beyond, uh, this is a, a land trust in Missouri and Arkansas, I think, but don't quote me. <laughs> they have made little icons even for their stories. So again, it's completely customizable. It's optional. The stories you make can go here if you choose, but they do not have to. And you can theme them in a lot of cool and fun ways. Okay, Instagram Live. Again, popular in the time of COVID. From your account, the home page, you would swipe to the left. On the bottom, um, there's some options for how you're gonna create. Do you wanna slide over to the live button? It has that little feature on the front. When you're live on Instagram, folks can ask you questions. Those would come up to you in real time if you were doing this, and then you can respond as you want to. Um, when you're done doing a live video, you can choose to keep it on your profile in what's called Instagram TV, which just means long videos beyond 60 seconds. You can download it to your phone or you can delete it forever. So I'll just play this again one more time from your homepage. You would swipe over to the left. This is where you would add any Instagram story if you wanted to, including Boomerang, like someone mentioned, is an option at the bottom, but we would just choose live in this case. And from there, you would hit go, record yourself, answer questions. You also can go live with a friend. So if somebody is watching, um, you can click their name and then they'll pop up in the screen with you. It'll be half your face, half your friend's face, and you can live together. Um, so if I saw that my friend Rebecca was watching my live stream, I could click her face or her name rather, and she'd pop up and we'd be live together to the public. So just like Facebook had insights, so does Instagram. Let me pause this for a second. Um, there's a number of ways to get to the, face, or the Instagram insights. One of them is on each post. If you were to open the post, each one will have the view insights bar at the bottom. Once you do that, you can see how many people have looked at, clicked on, liked, shared, anything related to the individual post. You can't see who it was, so it's, it's totally anonymous, but you can see how many people have done all of those things. Again, you can do that per post if you want to, or you can see that for your entire profile by clicking the insights button on the front, or going into the side menu and clicking insights, takes it to the same place. You can see um, an overview of your posts, you can see how many people are visiting your profile page, you can see when they're doing this, by day, by time. Um, this information is interesting if you're thinking about when to post certain things, when they might have the most engagement and the most likes, um, what days of the week people are viewing your profile the most. That can all help you in planning when to publish your content or when to go live if you want to do that. So that is the end of what I have. Um, if there were any other questions, I can take them now or I can walk us through Canva. I can show you my Wee Video um, page if you want to, whatever folks want to do. So Catherine, we did get um, a couple questions that I do want to make sure we get to. Um, can you talk a little bit about how Instagram and Facebook interact with each other and how you can post from one to the other? Sure, so Instagram's only a phone thing really, so I can't share my screen and show you, but um, 
when you're about to hit a Facebook post, publish, or sorry, I'm sorry again. You have to publish an Instagram post. There's an option there to share it to Facebook. You'll have to integrate your account together in advance. So on your Instagram page, in the settings, you can connect your Facebook page, do that in advance. Once you do that, uh, whenever you're about to publish anything on Instagram, you can publish it to Facebook at the same time with one click. Keep in mind that on Instagram captions, you can only write text. You can't do links, like hot links. On Facebook, you can. So sometimes if you are posting something on Instagram, you won't include the website link because it's not live. When you publish it to Facebook at the same time, you can go into that post, edit it, and add in your link to your website. I do that a lot to make sure that the, the posts work for both things, for both platforms. Awesome. And then I was actually wondering if you could talk a little bit about what Boomerang is and how to use it. Sure. Let me think if I have a Boomerang like on my computer. I might. Um, so Boomerang is a feature on Instagram where from your home page, if you were going to slide to the left and go to live, like I showed you, instead of choosing live at the bottom in that menu, you can, you can choose instead um, a boomerang. A boomerang is a short video that starts in one side, ends, and comes back like a boomerang. So, um, for example, if Amy was doing another cartwheel, you would see her cartwheel down and come on back. It goes back and forth. They're just supposed to be fun, kind of cute. Um, I don't have any on our page right now to show you, but they're fun. Excellent. I'm trying to see if we have any other questions. You also can download, um, you also can download a boomerang from Inst like Instagram will, will make it. You can download it to your phone and then share it to Facebook or, or wherever else you want. Fun fact. Okay, so Connie asks, why do Instagram videos show how many people watched instead of how many people liked? That's just what Instagram likes to do as a metric instead of likes making you feel like your post got a lot of publicity. They just do views. Um, on your insights, you can see how many people liked it, um, but that's just what they, what both they chose. So you can see as the publisher how many people liked your video, but the public can't see that. So what she means is, for example, on this photo, we have 19 likes. On this video, we have 120 views, um, but that's not the same thing. That's okay. Um, and then Connie also asked about Instagram TV. So Instagram TV is a, another feature of Instagram because you can only upload videos onto your profile that are 60 seconds long. If they're any longer than that, Instagram will give you the option of uploading it to your Instagram TV. Um, that, you don't have to do any more work for that. It's not a big deal, you can do it it'll show up on your profile right next to all of your publications. It'll just be in its own separate tab over here as a TV tab, which just means longer videos than 60 seconds. So again, making sure that you are squeezing all of your content into the shortest amount possible is crucial. Okay, another question. I think that was from Connie. Yes, creating photos. Okay, so sharing other people's posts. So that is really important to support our peers and making sure that everyone's posts are being seen. Um, to do that, you can, I wish I could share my phone screen and show you my Instagram, because um, Instagram's only a phone feature. But when you are publishing something, before you even repost, making sure that you are tagging other people is really important. 
So for example, on this that I posted this morning, I've tagged um, our partners. So Keeney Park groups, Goza, Hello Groton Friends. Um, so tagging someone's really important, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram, because then that post will show up in their world to their viewers. And that will again, um, get each other's audiences to look at your other content. Um, on Facebook, you can hit the share button and it will, whoop, oh, here we have it right here. On Facebook, you can share people's things to your page. And um, again, all the links that they will have will stay hot. For World Water Day in March, we did this where a bunch of organizations, we all were posting World Water Day content and sharing them. So they came up on all of our pages concurrently. So it just hit the max amount of people if you followed one of like eight organizations that day, you saw everybody's content. Let me show a shared thing. Um, oops. Looking for an example of when we shared, okay, here we go. Um, if you can see my screen in this example, the Roxbury Land Trust shared this great post. We thought that it deserved to be shared to all of our members too. So we would hit the share button. We typed in our own caption here just to augment their post and set it up for our viewers. We can still see the original publisher, their original caption. I can click on them and go right to their page if I want to. Um, and we reached 145 people, which is pretty cool. And more than the post would have had if it wasn't shared. So sharing other friends and other organizations posts is really helpful for everybody. Was there another question? Catherine, can you touch on maybe how you do that on Instagram, um, how you can either regram someone's post or how you can share it to uh, share someone's post to your organization's stories maybe? Sure, so I'm not, I'm not sure Rebecca if you have advice because you know what I'm saying? How Instagram is a phone platform. It's hard to show things on the computer. Mm -hmm. For this, I could switch to sharing my phone screen. I don't know. I would say, um, you know, I would say that there's a lot of things that are fun by learning on your own, not going to lie. Um, so there are, um, ways you can see uh, when you click on a post, how to share it to story. Um, there's also, and Catherine, maybe you know if you off the top of your head, but there's also apps that you can use to um, regram so that you can grab someone's static photo that they post on their feed. Yeah. And then um, post it on your own feed. But it does also look like we have some interest in seeing the Wii video um, program as well. Sure. So I don't want you to have to flip back and forth too much. So okay. maybe we'll move into that for now. Okay, sure. Uh, if you have any other Instagram questions, you can email me or call me and we can work it out together. But I will just show you quickly. This is the, so this is the platform I use for our Earth Day video. It's called We Video. Again, there is a free and paid version. This is the paid version. So if you chose to do this free, it might be a little different. But you can see I have my media area. I've uploaded all of my videos and things into the program itself. So I can click on our Earth Day folder and everything's right there. Most video programs will have this where you can upload everything you have right into the program so it's easy to drag and drop. Again, why I suggest naming everything because all of these letters and numbers are kind of confusing. Um, from there, I would grab one of the videos, pull it on to a layer like this. Um, you can see at the top the timestamp, so the total length of the video. This blue bar tells me where I am in that time. Um, I can add effects, some cool colors. You shouldn't do that, it's pretty tacky. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Um, but if you wanted to, you could. Black and white can be cool. What else can I do? I can flip it around. Make him go upside down, flip it side to side. Sorry, Aaron, that he's our test subject for, for this clip. 
That's Aaron from the New Canaan Land Trust. I can, let me go back and make it right side up. Okay. Um, I can fade him in and out. So say I wanted him to fade in, I could add that. I could make him fade out for like a slow amount of time or a long amount of time here. We can change the brightness and the contrast. This is really helpful if you, like I mentioned earlier, were in a really sunny area or an area that wasn't sunny enough. You can change uh, the color and the look of the clips as you need. So maybe someone's a little, sh little shadowy, you can change it up a little bit um, to make them look a little better if you want to. Most programs will have something like this. The Adobe software, like someone mentioned earlier, has this times 50, where it's like a really intricate um, color changing setting that you, you can choose. But again, that's a pretty intense software that I wouldn't do for someone who's doing this for the first time. Yeah. I can also speed it up if I want to. I can slow it down, which is not something we want to do if someone's speaking, but something might be helpful for like a nature scene to make it go slow-mo or to speed up something with a time lapse, for example. So we will just go out of this. Save changes. Um, at the bottom right, if you can still see that on my screen, I can zoom in and out. Because they let you go down to like the microsecond of each click, you can zoom in really far. Uh, when you do that, it's hard to see your whole project because it might be a few minutes long and when you go down to the microsecond, your view changes. So here I can see from moment zero all the way to this finishes at two minutes and 17 seconds. So I can see the whole thing. I can see what's going on. I'm gonna delete Aaron. Goodbye. Um, we video has cool text effects that you can add. I added like an opening and closing statement. Here, for example. I don't know if it's gonna preview because Zoom is taking up a lot of bandwidth on my computer, but um, all of these effects that say motion, the text will move in and out in a little more sophisticated way than maybe your high school PowerPoints would like whoosh in and whoosh out. You can do all these things, but they look pretty professional in my opinion. Um, you can find the one that works for you. And again, all this text you would replace with, with your own text. They just put that in there as a, an example of what it would look like. So my computer's feeling a little slow because of the zoom, but there are so many motion text effects you can add. Again, adding a credit slide at the end or adding your logo or your slogan at the beginning is helpful. They have audio. This is all stock audio that you can add without crediting anybody. Um, I think someone mentioned making sure that you credit other people for their work. If you do that, adding a really small text at the bottom saying Catherine Lang 2020, whatever it is, is really helpful. Um, they have text also that doesn't move for that kind of thing. You just put the bottom. Um, over here, we have stock media. So they even have video clips, photos that are all free for you to use. A lot of them are like kind of glamorous and dramatic like this. Um, that's obviously not Connecticut, but <laughs> they might have other things that would work for you. Let's see, some birds flying. <laughs> you can search for what you want. Maybe I'm searching for a turtle. And all of their stock media will come up. Again, this stuff you don't have to credit. It's included with the program. Canva, Lumen5, the other programs I mentioned will also have stock media, both audio and video and images you can just use without crediting anybody. 
So if you just need some B-roll, if you're just making a quick post about something larger than your own preserve and a stock video will do it, they have have you covered. Transitions, backgrounds. Catherine, I'm wondering if uh, maybe we can have some people chime in in the chat to see how they want to use these, how they want to use video, what they hope to do with some of um, these tools that they're gaining, um, what types of video, what platforms, that kind of thing. And sure. Maybe so if you know how you'd like to use this video um, or have some ideas of what you want to do with videos, whether it's on social media or somewhere else, maybe pop that into the chat. Um, and if you're looking for ideas, feel free to ask through the chat as well. Um, one thing to mention quick is if everybody can see my, my export screen here, um, a lot of other platforms will have these options so we can export it in different qualities. Um, this 4K Ultra HD is something that you typically do not need. Most phones and computers don't have the capacity to even display this high of quality. So you can pretty much ignore that. A lot of plans you have to pay extra to get 4K and I'm telling you that you don't need it. Until everybody's phones can view that, you don't need to make that. Um, one of these HD versions will absolutely do the trick for sure. Birthday video for my mom. Oh, Connie, we love that. Um, I'll show everybody Canva quickly. So this is the home page of Canva. They have preset templates you can use. So if you're trying to make an Instagram post, a Facebook cover, a traditional flyer, they have all of these templates that you can use that are already set up. Let's say we're going to make an Instagram post. And this is the free version of Canva, so you don't have to pay for all of these features. All right, once it loads, they have all of these themes on the left that you can scroll through with example text, example images, and you can customize them to a really expensive amount. So let's, let's look at the birthday ones. Let's say we were doing, say we're doing this one. So the example template will come up. From there, you can go in and edit the text if you want to. You can delete the photos and add your own. You can move all of things, these things around. Canva also has stock photos here on the left that you can add. More importantly, on the left for uploads, you can put your own content into here. So I was using this this morning. So these are some of our CLCC photos that I've just put into here. Some logos of our partner organizations. Um, that's really helpful for you to make your own social media posts, whatever you're doing. You can just drag and drop really easily and make a post. They have, again, stock videos, stock music, fancy text. You can change the colors of the text. You can add all kinds of things. Let me address. Um, and again, on Canva, you can make videos, but they're pretty short. You can't edit the video clips once they're in here, so they have to come in perfect, which is hard for most of us to do. Um, but then you can add on your fun text, your logos, whatever it is. Let me show you. I have a video right here. So this uh, never was published. I was just practicing and messing around a little bit. So they have their video clips as what they're calling pages. 
Here I have a stock video of water. Below, I have Amy. I've added a caption with her name and her title. Then I did the same thing for me. I copy and pasted that caption and filled it in with my information um, and added our logo to the top. So it's pretty quick to make professional looking videos and posts on Canva. So Catherine, I've just gotten our now uh, three minute warning. And if we would like, uh, for those who are still hanging on on the call here, um, if Catherine, you want to stop sharing your screen and have everyone turn yeah. their videos back on um, so we can actually create a little social media content ourselves here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop share. Okay. I know we've got a few more questions in the chat. Um, so Catherine, do you want to open it up for people to be able to email you if they um, have more oh, questions? Oh, definitely. Yeah, you can email me. You can call me. I am just hanging out. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So if you, you have done this at the beginning, not at the end. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So or yeah, I've if... taken the photo. And how do you take a photo? <laughs> I can go oh, ahead and take I the think photo. That's the last question you can answer for one of these. <laughs> um, there are some great built-in apps on your <laughs> on your computer, kind of like Catherine mentioned with screen capture. Um, so I'm doing this on a Mac, so there's a quick cheat code for that, uh, which is command, return, and four. So if everyone wants to take a nice big smile while we're doing this, and I'll go ahead and take some pictures. Oh, let's see. Wait, what's that? There we go. And I always take just a few, just to be safe. All right. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. So I think that about brings us, I think there might have been, it's one more minute left and you can keep your screens on, but I think we had a couple more questions that maybe we can catch in the last minute. Um, looks like Connie had a couple here. Let me scroll up or Rebecca, if you wanna, maybe you're better at this than I am. Uh, video about the videos being clickable. Catherine, they are. Yeah, so, so most, most videos don't let you embed links into your graphics. Um, some of the more advanced software might, like Adobe might, I'm not sure. But most times you would just have to add it in the, the link below, the caption to your video. Um, and you could always say that in your video with text, like make sure to click below to our link to our website. And I think um, donor question, was there any other, I thought another question, oh, let's see. And then we're probably down to the end here. Uh, it might've been the last one. There was one comment from Deb saying, wow, that looks like Weebly web page software, software. Not sure what that is, but um, great. <laughs> Canva <laughs> looks just like Yeah, you're there, so you can yep, explain that to us in the last 30 seconds. Yeah, the Canva looks just like the Weebly, which made me happy because now I'm not afraid of it. <laughs> Great. <Excellent. laughs> All right, everybody, it's 1.45. Thank you so much for your time today. And Catherine, terrific job. Thank you so much. And Catherine is available at CLCC at klang at ctconservation.org. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you during the next call. Take care, everybody.